Hello, everybody. I just want to look around for a moment. Sometimes it's um, quite overwhelming standing at the front for me, and I can find it difficult to actually be connecting with you. But if I can um, calm myself for a moment, it's, it's lovely to look around and to see you, my brothers and my sisters. So, thank you, Jesus, for connection to each other. It was great hearing from people this morning. I really enjoyed and appreciated it. Thank you for everything that you brought and, and the band. I always find that the songs that Andy chooses are inspiring and um, join up the dots as well, often, with what I'm wanting to bring. Find the Holy Spirit is active and at work in these things. It's really encouraging. It's a wonderful thing to be known, isn't it? And talking about being really known and really understood. And I think all of us long for this. And to be with somebody who knows you really well and understands you, maybe sometimes understands you better than you understand yourself, and loves you and accepts you for who you are. It's a powerful thing. It's liberating. And for me, time with my close friends is a real priority in life, a necessity, actually. And I'm really grateful to God for those close friends that I have. All of us need to be known, and as we're known and accepted, I think it fulfills what we are as humans, as God has made us to be. He's made us to need close connection in order to thrive, and it enables us to be ourselves, doesn't it, to be who we are and to contribute what we can. When a baby is born, it's dependent on close connection. It's dependent on its needs being understood and met. And God has ordained it to be that way. We've got a young woman at work who's doing a health and social sciences course. And part of her training is to take home a robotic baby for the weekend. <laughs> And it's programmed to cry in different ways. And she has to learn to respond and interpret its needs and, and hopefully meet its needs at different times of the day and night. I wish her luck. <laughs> I hope it's easier than when it's a real baby. But from our first breath, God has created us to need to live closely with at least one other person. And we need this through our lives. And when we feel known, then we can reach our potential in God and in our life. But in all of it, God enhances the power of connection through the power of the Holy Spirit working within us. Being known isn't a one-off thing because we're constantly changing as people, aren't we? Constantly developing and growing in Jesus. And you can't just spend time with somebody and think you know them forever. You have to spend time often with people. And relationships can't be stagnant. And it's the same with God. God Almighty, God of glory, he's passionate to know us. He's passionate to know you and to know me. And he's one who understands and knows us better than we can ever know ourselves. And he will never turn us away. So I want this morning for us to take the opportunity to consider the love of God and his passion for us. I think the more that we can take it into our hearts, 
the more it'll change our lives. So we're going to look together at a psalm and then later on we're going to do a short personal meditation. So if we could have the first scripture, please, Psalm 139. And um, we have Micah's going to kindly read it for us. Come over here, Micah. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. For you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Thank you. Thanks, Micah. And thank you, Nick. Have the psalm back up, please, Nick. I'm just going to take us through. Thank you. Okay. Um, so God is the God of the universe, and yet he's the God who knows about you, and he knows about me. So he searches us, he knows us, He knows when you sit down and when you stand up. When you decided to sit down for this morning's meeting, I don't know if it was when Julia gave us our warning or whether you sat down a bit later or a bit before, uh, that registered with God. Do you believe it? God Almighty, he registers you sitting down, you standing up. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. I cannot attain it. He knows what I'm thinking. He knows what you are thinking, even from a distance. So no matter what you are focused on, God's attention is on you. Why does he bother? Can it make us even feel paranoid if we think about it? We need to fear God. And we need to fear acting wrongly. But what's the reason for God praying, paying, sorry, such close attention to us? So he cares deeply for us. He watches as we take a journey. Verse 3. 
You search out my path. You know if I decide to lie down. Why does he do that? Well, I'm really grateful that he watches us on our journeys. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was on the M6 going to work, and I had a blowout. Um, I was, I'd been overtaking lorries, and I, just, you know, I was in the, uh, in the slower lane, and I realized there was something very wrong with the car. Nothing showed up on the dashboard. Please, God, help me. So I was on a smart motorway, so-called. Um, God did help me. And I was able to pull off at the, at the um, next slipway. When the AA man came, he said to me, you need to put some money in the charity box today. You were really lucky. Um, he said you were really lucky. And you were really lucky also that you were able to pull off. And it wasn't a major incident, which it would have been. Um, God was watching over me, and I'm really grateful. Um, interestingly, he also thought I said I was going to church. And he said, um, in response to that, he said, we need all the prayer we can get at the moment in this country with, with the pandemic and so on. God was in, in that interaction. Uh, I'm really grateful that I came through totally unscathed. I'm really thankful to God. God cares. Um, on Friday, Nigel had a message from Betty. Did, did Catherine go to work today? Uh, Betty was concerned because she was aware of the winds and so on. God is concerned for us, for our journeys. Amazing. God knows what we say, even before a word is on our tongue. God knows what we're going to say. He hems us in. Another way of saying it is hedging us around. God is protecting us. Your hand is on me. You hold me. Just imagine for a moment God's hand holding you. God's hand protecting you. Maybe as a father gently holds and guides a small child. And remember, when you feel alone, remember you are never alone. God's hand is holding you. You know, there's 67 million people in the UK. That's a lot of awareness, isn't it? <laughs> God is aware of each one, I believe. And across the whole world, okay, apparently the population is, in the last 200 years has grown sevenfold. But God is infinite, and his understanding, his knowledge of us is infinite. God covers us. We can't go from his spirit. We can't flee from God. He is always there. His hand is leading us. And as Betty prayed earlier, he formed us as we were in our mother's womb. So amazing. Such grace. God's thoughts are more than the sand They are greater, more numerous than the sand on the sea. We can't take in God's greatness, can we? We can't take in his desire for intimacy with us. It's a secure place. We are in a secure place in the hands of God. Try me and know my thoughts. Some places it translates that, my anxieties, which some of us will relate to. Know my anxieties. See if there is any wicked way in me. And then take me to the blood of Jesus. Lead me in the way everlasting. God's care for us is infinite. And how do we know that? We know that while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. Jesus died for you. Jesus 
died for me. He has transformed my life. He is transforming my life. I'm so grateful. So God pursues us in our everyday lives. And he wants us also to pursue him through our everyday lives. As I think Jane was saying earlier, he wants to write a well-rounded story in our lives. Slow and steady progress and character development, deliberate faithfulness, maybe between the high points, but finding God, choosing to find God in the ordinary, and remembering that Jesus had, as far as we know, an ordinary life for 30 years. So embracing God in the ordinariness of life. I know some Mim has said to us about the first thing in the morning, she says, good morning to the Holy Spirit. So why don't we train ourselves to be like Mim? Train ourselves to be like Julia, who thanks God as she looks back over the day at the end of each day, finding God in the ordinariness of our day. And then maybe God isn't so invisible. He's not so silent. We hear him in the song of the birds. As we see him in the rainbow, in the sky, we hear him in the winds. We're conscious of his greatness, his almightiness, the ferociousness of these winds that we're all conscious of at the moment. Isn't it God? Isn't it a reflection of his almightiness? Can't we learn from these things? And Romans tells us, for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So we are without excuse. Nature is spellbinding and God is showing us his handiwork, expressing his beauty and his care. We're, only, we're going to see Jesus in the next life, but for now, we need to know that on the days that we feel God and the days that we don't feel God, he's still there, his spirit still indwells inside us. And sometimes we need to disconnect from other things, don't we, in order to find God in order to connect with God. Psalm 46 gives us a clear commandment, be still and know that I am God. And I think it can be hard to be still. My being still is often as I'm walking with nature and I see God and I connect with God. But we also need to develop our stillness in his presence, being physically still. And our mind can be cleared and we can receive from him. So I'm going to finish by giving us the opportunity to spend a few minutes just contemplating together. Um, I would encourage you to read Psalm 46, another absolutely amazing psalm. Both of these psalms and so many others are so amazing, so full of God's love, so full of God's richness and life, and it's there for us to take part in. So um, we're going to read Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. I'm just going to go back to it. And I'm going to reread it, but I'm going to read it in portions. And I'd just like to invite you to spend a few moments considering the portions as I'm reading them to you receiving from God, listening to him, hearing from him. Be still and know that I am God. (coughs) 
Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Hallelujah. Remember the wonderful good news. You can connect with God through Jesus. You are always seen by God. You are always heard. You are never alone. You are deeply loved by him. Thank you, Jesus.